السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين اللهم فقهنا في دينك وعلمنا التأويل اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا uh, Welcome uh, uh, to all our beloved brothers and sisters to uh, session number 17 session number 17 of our Ramadan tafsir uh, this is of course the final few days uh, of of this blessed month of Ramadan. And so, you know, we wanted to, inshallah, hopefully end things on a high note. We wanted to uh, have some, you know, inshallah, khair and benefits in these in these last couple of days. And again, what better way to do that than with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I, I wanted number one. I know it's kind of we wait for people to to get to to join in, but I, I wanted to to thank all of the brothers and the sisters uh, who participated in uh, the uh, the the khatm al Quran last night and the fundraisings. I know it can be long. I know it can be. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot that's happening, there's a lot that's going on, even uh, just, you know, kind of sitting through the fundraising, uh, just being there, but uh, alhamdulillah, it's, 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 it's worth it to see, you know, the, the khair that comes uh, to the community and from the community, and so may Allah Azza wa bless all of those who gave to make the this project inshallah that's that's it's been being you know it's been spoken about for so long uh to make it a reality and uh subhanallah it's 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 amazing to see what you know a community can do by the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the tawfiq of allah azza wa jal so uh, alhamdulillah for that jazakumullah khair Second thing is, I know um, that you know uh, there was questions about the the eclipse prayer, so um, and and you know and then even as it relates to class, so the the eclipse prayer will be happening at um, I can tell there's only a few people. It will be happening at all three of our locations actually uh, now after Salat al-Dhuhr, and it will be about an hour long after Salat al-Dhuhr, inshallah. So um, we, we'll, we'll end a little bit early. I know, you know, people want to get there and people want to, to participate. So Dhuhr is at 1.15, so we'll try to end by 1. And, and again, the benefit, I know, of, um, you know, it being like this being virtual is that, you know, uh, you can, you know, if, if, if maybe uh, you're on your way or you need to leave a little bit earlier than that, even you can uh, just uh, maybe, you know, take this on your phone and, and, and then have it in the car, inshallah. Or, you know, just maybe if you need to end early and go and then you know, watch the rest of the recording, that's, that's fine as well. Be it in Allah Ta'ala. So, uh, just wanted to, you know, you know, make everyone, uh, <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. So yeah, from from a different location here, just to be any, uh, I guess, closer uh, for for the the the, the salat al kusuf clips prayer. Um, and it's interesting, alhamdulillah, it's interesting that it coincides with the surah that we're starting. And so when I, when I saw that, I thought it's also good uh, because, 
the surah that we're starting inshallah today is surah to shams and it is an eclipse of the shams of the sun right and so to you know to, to appreciate this sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more because ultimately at the end of the day this is exactly uh you know what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh had you know, said when the sun uh, was eclipsed, right, uh, that these are signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Ayatun min ayatillah. And that Allah azza wa jal shows us his immense power and his mercy through these signs, through these signs. And so the more that we're acquainted with them, the more that we're familiar with them, inshallah ta'ala, the more that we... Uh, that we can benefit from them as well, inshallah. Okay, so um, yeah, just wanted to give that introduction. So we will have, you know, a class today and then also uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then, of course, it will be, it will be Eid, bi idhnillahi ta'ala. So, uh, you know, I hope inshallah ta'ala uh, there's khair in, in in these in these sessions and i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to end this month uh, in a way that is pleasing to him and in a way that allows for us to be uh, written from those who have been given written from those who sought and who caught uh, laylatul qadr and written from those who uh, can experience many more Ramadans uh, with Allah Azza wa Jal's uh, mercy and pleasure and acceptance. Allahumma ameen. All right, Bismillah. So I'm going to read Surah Al Shams. I'm going to read the whole thing. I don't think we'll get to the whole thing, but we'll do our best, inshallah. And then we'll read the translation and then we'll go from there. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بطغواها إذ انبعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها All right translation by the sun and its light by the moon when it follows it by the day when it illuminates by the night when it covers it by the sky and the one who created it by the earth and the one who spread it out by the soul and the one who perfected it, and then inspired it with evil and piety. Undoubtedly, the one who purified it has succeeded, and the one who has soiled it has certainly failed. The Thamud rejected because of their rebelliousness. When the worst of them stood up, and the Messenger of Allah warned them, do not, in fear, do not interfere with the camel of Allah and his drinking. However, they rejected him and killed it. So their Rub annihilated them because of their sins and made their destruction widespread. And he does not uh, he does not fear consequences of his actions. Okay. That's Surat Shams. Here, by the way, Surah Al Shams is Surah 91. Surah 91, which means Alhamdulillah, we have finished 
90 surahs, 90 surahs of the Quran. And so we have, that means 24 left, inshallah ta'ala. That's exciting, right? Everyone's excited? <laughs> I'm going to assume everyone's like, yes, yes, I'm very excited. Ooh. All right. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. We have some people who are excited. All right. So, Surat Ash-Shams, the name, of course, we're saying it. Surat Ash-Shams. Uh, some also said Wash-Shams. Surat Ash-Shams or Wash-Shams, of course, from the beginning of the Surah here. That's what is found in most of the books of Tafsir and Hadith. Also, you have, I'm going I'm to uh, assume you guys are guessing what the second name here is. Uh, that Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, and in his Sahih, as well as Imam al-Tirmidhi, in his, uh, in, his, uh, in, in, in his jami', his, his book, of hadith, they, they both called it Surah wa Shamsi wa Duhaha, right? So the first ayah based off of that, okay? Uh, and this, this is good too, obviously, because um, it distinguishes it from some of the other surahs that start with a Shams. Right, like Ida Shamsu Kuwirat, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes it distinct. The amount of ayat, adadu ayatiha, is uh, 15 or 16. 15 or 16. So in, in the Maslahiv, generally, that you are familiar with, that you have, it's 15. Whereas uh, in some of the other ones, it's 16, which means that they made a distinction between uh, an ayah here that's not made. I'm trying to see which one, maybe. Maybe, فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا that's what I would assume that they added an extra ayah there, and meaning next, like the uh, ayah number, obviously not actual, an extra, not actually an extra ayah. Yeah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's what it seems like. Like they put a pause or a break there after faqaruh. All right, so this surah is Makki. Definitely, right, by the consensus of the Mufassirin, by the consensus of the Mufassirin, okay? Uh, and and uh, <clears throat> one of the things that makes this surah unique, okay, and all the surahs in the Qur'an are unique in their own way, but one of the things that makes this surah unique is that this surah, if you can, like as you hear it, right, that the surah, it starts with the most amount of oaths in the Qur'an. The most amount of oaths in the Qur'an. So 11 straight oaths. 11 straight oaths. Okay? Uh, and and that's, that's a lot. Right? And so pay a special attention to not just the oaths here. What are the things that Allah Azawajal is swearing by? But pay special attention to... Um, to, to what is the jawab of the qasam? What is the answer? Or what is the response of, of these oaths? Okay. Um, so that's something that is going to be very important here. And that stands out specifically in this surah. That you have 11 oaths in a row. So what is... So, so, so important because, again, anything that Allah mentions in the Qur'an is going to be important. And then, of course, anything that he mentions with an oath is going to be important, even if it's one oath. Now, 11 oaths in a row, and then there's a response to those oaths. What is it? You'll see. I mean, it's not like a secret. You can check. 
but yeah, it's it's going to obviously be something extremely extremely important. And the author of 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 the text that we're using, uh, Sheikh Salman, uh, may Allah Azza wa free him and preserve him. He uh, he he makes an interesting point here. He says, you know, when you when you uh, when you look at the the way that the Quran, uh, you know, uh, addresses things and and gives examples and uh, you know points us to these any yani, realities and phenomenon around us, he mentions how is how how the Quran, uh, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uses examples that are easy to understand. Okay, that. Anyone who is coming to the Quran, regardless of like education level or intelligence level, is going to be able to understand it and benefit from it. Whether it's a, a you know a, a child and you're a young adult or a you know Bedouin in the desert, someone who has no specialization, someone who has a, a, a lot of specialization. The, you know the the person who works as a like a uh, store like a, 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 a like just just works in in a uh, you know like whatever any yani whatever position whatever education level whatever understanding level they're going to be able to understand it right and they'll understand even subhanallah the basic meaning with without even like having to go to like you know, uh, a bunch of tafsir books and see like, what does this even mean? Right? Like these, these meanings are going to be very clear, very straightforward, very easy to understand. وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْضُحَاهَا yani By the sun and its, and its light, right? Like this is a sign for everyone because everyone has access to that, can see it, can understand its value and its importance. And at the same time, he says that you find also such deep and subtle meanings and 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 like secrets and complexities that you know, only those who have a, a very deep level of specialization and understanding and uh you know just any uh, khibra and experience would understand right like like you know so and and like whether it's someone who just goes outside and looks at the sun, or whether it's someone who has three PhDs in astronomy and in you know whatever other science, like there there's going to be something for everyone, right? So the Quran is at is is at the same time, I mean, both extremely easy and accessible, but also extremely complex and uh, and, and 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 deep and layered, right? That's why you can have Hundreds of thousands of people go to the Quran and read it and understand it and, and write explanations about it and have different tafasir that uh you know that 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 they all are drawing from any yani, the well of, of 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 the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Uh, and also yani, subhanAllah, the way that the Quran maintains its relevance. And it's um, it, it it maintains its relevance and its uh, like any amazingness, right? Um, like there's there's so it's 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 there's so many layers, right? It's so it's so in depth, and it's something that regardless of you know who's Regardless of when it's being read as well, it's something that makes sense and that could be understood. So Allah Azza wa Jal keeps things general enough so that, again, uh, there's someone at the door. Give me one second. I'll be right back, inshallah. One second.
All right, sorry about that. Uh, Bismillah. So, so what I was saying is, you know, subhanAllah, like uh, the Quran maintains its relevance regardless of the timing of the audience as well. Okay, and so Allah Azza wa keeps things general enough that anyone would be able to read it and not uh, like feel that the Quran is speaking beyond their time, right? So, you know, if, if you know, people before, you know, we had advancements in knowing, you know, when, uh, like the, the, you know, like when, 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 you know, astronomy, for example, made advancements to tell us how far away the sun is, right? Or how large the sun is. Like if the Quran had had uh, brought those facts, you know, to a people a thousand years ago or 1400 years ago, that it would have come across as like unbelievable, right? Too unbelievable. Um, and, and beyond their capacity at that time. And so you find that the Quran maintains a level of like generality that it's it's still something like the sun is, is being seen here as an example, but it's not being seen as an example that's that's unbelievable, right? Like imagine also if the Quran talked about certain things that would come like, you know, like computers, or, or planes, or uh, cars, right? Like, those people at that time would have been like, what is this? Like, this is like, you know, just a bunch of, like, things that are beyond, like, that don't even make sense. But what you find instead is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, like, uh, hints, right? He, he gives, uh, like, just, and they say isharat, like things that kind of indicate the greatness of some of these things and the power of some of these things, and 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 like what's to come, even with some of these things, but without you know it being something that loses its relevance to uh, a group of of people. So like Allah Azza Jal said, you know, for example, I'll give you a good example. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِعِ النُّجُومِ Allah says, I swear by the position of the stars. And then he says, This is an oath that if you only knew, it's يعني, how great it was. Like it's a great oath if you only knew. Right? So someone reading that or hearing that a thousand years ago, right? Uh, they would they would see it. And yes, it's, it is a great oath. The stars are... <clears throat> <clears throat> are amazing and look at their positions and these type of things. But then when we when when we read this, after seeing some of the information that comes from some of these telescopes, right, and some of these, you know, uh, uh, like space centers, then 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 we really start to appreciate it more, right? That we realize like how many billions or millions of light years away the, these these stars are, and you know. All of these, you know, like the light that we're seeing is from before and all these things, right? And maybe, maybe a hundred years from now, that that's also, that's going to be something even more, right, of an amazing oath when when more information is, is discovered. I mean, we're discovering new things every single day, subhanAllah, even with all of the technology and the progress that that we have, right? And, and so... Um, there's another one that, oh, that I thought was a really interesting example too. In Surah An-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, yeah, well, he says, وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَةً وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ قَصْدُ السَّبِيلِ وَمِنْهَا جَاءِ He says, he's talking about modes of transportation. He says, and, and the khayl and the bighal and the hamid, right, horses and mules and donkeys, for you to ride them, wazina, uh, uh, and also as a form of beautification, right? Like something that you enjoy, that you benefit from. And then he says, and he creates what you do not know, right? And subhanAllah, like now with the progress again that we have, you think about the cars that we that we're, we, we're, we're blessed to enjoy and to benefit from and that allow us to 
uh, to وعلى الله قصد السبيل like that allow us to make you know these types of journeys and these types of travels and shorten them for us right can not, now we can't imagine a life without having cars that allow us to cut long distances in such short periods of time and Allah says that he in this ayah he says ويخلق ما لا تعلم he creates what you do not know right and so what and he, th- this again at that time Allah knows best. Yani Allah, they say Allah creates what we don't know. Okay, that's something that's easily acceptable. But now we come and we say, look, subhanAllah, this is what Allah created that they didn't know back then, at least some examples of it, that now we benefit from and we enjoy. And again, only Allah knows what's going to come after. You know, there's some new modes even of transportation that, you know, I, I you know, people have been, you know, kind of talking about and saying, oh, this may be the next thing, right? Like uh, these, I don't know if you've seen them. I don't know how realistic or far along or, you know, if this is like just a, a concept or an actual uh, idea that's going to be implemented. But there's these like small like pods that travel underground, but that are even even faster than, you know, much, much faster than car travel, right? And that can get you to like any you know, very long distance in very short periods of time. So... The point is, overall here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Qur'an, it, it's, it's always amazing and relevant and, and forces the, the, the one who engages with it and interacts with it to think, right? To use their minds, to, uh, to search, to, uh, to, to experience these things and, and to see يعني, uh, يعني what Allah has, has uh, made clear, but also what he's hidden. And 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 left for those who are seeking it to to, to reach it as well, right? Uh, so how does Allah Azza wa Jal start the surah here? He starts was shamsi wa duhaha. He he makes two oaths even in the first ayah, right? He swears by the sun and then he swears by its duha. Okay, and so here Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the sun, and the sun is something that, of course, everyone knows and everyone is. Uh, يعني, you, you don't need uh, to have it explained to you what the sun is or its importance or, you know, uh, prove it, prove that there's the sun. In fact, they use this as the example of not having to prove things that are, are, are so clear, right? Like if something is very, very clear that it doesn't require any proof, they say it's as clear as the sun in the day sky, right? And he, meaning it's something, subhanAllah, that is absolutely central for uh, the human being and our existence and our reality uh, yani for us to be able to, to, to be alive. We wouldn't be alive, of course, after Allah, but we wouldn't be alive if we didn't have the sun. And we know this with the other planets in our solar system, that the ones that are too close to the sun, life is not possible in the way that it's possible here. And, the, and, and uh, those, those that are far farther from the sun uh that they they life is also not possible right but where allah Azza wa Jal placed the earth compared to the sun or the sun compared to the earth has made it possible and this already is a miracle right but allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the sun here and the sun this shows the the greatness of of the sun right and its importance in 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 a, in a person's life in the world's life and so Allah is swearing by the sun here in all of its forms, whether it's uh, risen or set, uh, seen or not seen. Um, and Allah Azza wa Jal created this sun, uh, and He made this sun the, the like we said, the cause or the source of uh, life for plants, life for animals, life for the human being, right? And it has a size that is, again, probably really, at the end of the day, beyond what we can truly understand, like just the massiveness of it. Um, and, and, and just the even, subhanAllah, uh, the, the distance that it is from, from the earth, uh, 1.3 million uh Miles away, 1.3 million miles away, I think. Uh, and it's still, subhanAllah, 
uh, yani just if you think about it, like this massive, massive object, ball of fire that's in the middle of the uh, the, 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 the sky, <laughs> the solar system, right? And that is rotating and that, you know, with all of this power that it has, with all of this heat that it has, uh, you know, that, you know, I, I remember hearing like that if a solar flare hits the, you know, there's these like solar flares that, that are so, so powerful that it would just completely wipe out the, the electric grid of like the entire world possibly. Right. Um, just subhanAllah, like the, the way that Allah Azza wa created this thing and, 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 and that if it, and like you said, if if it was closer, not only would life not exist, but it would destroy, could destroy the entire world. And yet Allah Azza wa Jalla put it at a distance that we're still able to benefit from the light, from its warmth, right? Uh, and 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 continue to, uh, and you have uh, an existence due to it. And then, of course, just. Uh, the distance between the earth and the sun is also a, such a tremendous distance and for it to be to have such a vital role with even that distance is is really amazing as well um and you see like you know, we see it like if you've been to like the planetarium or seen like videos or images like just how massive it actually is. And then how do we see it? We see it as like this, you know, small circle in the sky, subhanAllah. And just like uh, to the point that, you know, when there's, you know, an eclipse today, uh, the, inshallah, the, you know, the in some places at least, the, the moon, which is much, much smaller than even the earth, but the moon will completely eclipse the sun based off of the distances and and the location right and so if you really even if any subhanallah the sun that's so clear is also such a clear sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when when you really think about it when you really think about it right uh and so this is you know exactly what we mean when we say uh, when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that the sun and the moon these are two of the ayat the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they really show like this like the power of the sun shows us in a very clear way the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also the benefit of the sun shows us very clearly the mercy of Allah azza wa jal no doubt about that as well okay and then he says وضحاها, right and it's duha okay and the duha is referring to two things mainly but this is also an oath that Allah, the duha is nur shams the the light of the of, of the sun and then and this light again it illuminates the entire the entire earth right like this sun has the power to illuminate this entire vast large earth that we live on okay so the, the light of the sun and then number two harara to shams the heat of the the sun the heat of the sun um, and they say, you know, subhanAllah, again, like this sustains life on the earth. Like imagine, you know, even we know, like, you know, alhamdulillah, we live in a place that we do get some sun, a lot of sun, actually. It's a sunny day today until the eclipse, of course, uh, which is going to start at, I think, 12.50. By the way, the, the eclipse prayer, for those who are asking, is going to be an hour, inshallah. It's going to be an hour after, so, any for an hour duration. After Salat al -Dhuhr. If a person is unable, by the way, to get to the masjid and pray in jama'ah, they can also pray it at home during that time. And it has a special uh, method of praying as well. And that's why it's good. There's a, a principle that some of the scholars, they put out. They say if there's a sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then a person should at least do that sunnah once in their life, right? at least once in their life. And others that are more frequent, you know, that they should have to them maybe once every few months, once a month, once a week, once a day, right? Depending on the sunnah. 
And this is maybe one يعني, that can be practiced once every few years. Maybe a person only gets an opportunity once even in their lifetime to do it. So it's a good sunnah to take advantage of, especially like I said in the month of Ramadan. And the method of the, the prayer is it's two rak'ahs. It's two rak'ahs, but uh, with an extra rak'ah in between them or in, in each of those rak'ahs. So you say Allahu Akbar, fat, uh, Fatiha and a surah. And the, and the recitation is supposed to be extended, obviously, because the uh, the actual uh, salah itself is extended because of the, the length of the eclipse. So it's extended, and then you go into ruku'ah, and then when you come back up from ruku'ah, you uh, do fatiha and then another surah. Right? So you no, no sajdas at this point and then when you finish then then you go into rukur come back up then go into sujood to sujood and then you come back up and that's one right and then you do the same thing in the second rakah so fatiha surah a little bit shorter in the second part the second rakah rukur come back up fatiha surah rukur come back up sajda sajdas and then salam so that's that's the method of of the prayer itself that's the method of the prayer bi ta'ala okay so, um, who is this? So, okay, so back to this. <laughs> so Allah is swearing by uh, the, the sun and its and its light. By the sun and its and its light, okay? Uh, so, yani these two things, right? The the, the the duha of the sun, the light and the heat, they say that the amount of heat from the sun that reaches the earth is two parts out of one billion. Right, so two out of one billions, like the strength, and you meet me, and even with that, right? You, if you're in the sun too long, uh, or in certain areas where it's too hot, that there are, uh, you know, uh, the possibility of sunburn, and you know, uh, you you know, you can you can be harmed by the sun with too much exposure without protecting oneself. So. It is really something that that is that is uh, amazing, Subhanallah. When uh, when you think about it, I just got a notification saying that the U.S. is about to experience a total solar eclipse. This is in some areas going to be total, and you won't see another one until 2044. Until 2044, so 20 years, Subhanallah. So it is really something that is special, and this, Subhanallah, like you know, I I was. I, w I was, you know, thinking about this briefly that, you know, the different, look at, look at how, what Islam gives a person in their life. Like it gives them this meaning, even in these things that, you know, people see in very different ways. So like solar eclipse happens, we understand why it happens. It's a sign from the signs of Allah. And we also understand that, and you know, we don't associate any like, uh, any like superstitions or myths or you know anything any weird or strange these are signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and then what's the response pray to Allah you know uh whereas you know others and may Allah guide us in them it's you know it's the watch parties to go out and see and it is cool to see it definitely right like i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but still just the, the the greater purpose and meaning that Islam adds, you know, to to these uh, 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 events in, in in the world around us, right? Um, yeah. So just something to, to to reflect over, and and actually the 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 thing that that made me reflect over this was not the watch parties. The watch party is fine. Like this, it is something amazing, uh, and it's still a form you can say of like reflection and stuff, but. That the emails that you I, I was getting about like oh make sure that you check out the eclipse donut 
from Krispy Kreme. It's like, really? They had to make an Eclipse donut? Like to like that, that <laughs> like the consumerism, right? Like uh, I, I saw one, you know, uh, don't be eclipsed on, by this, by, by uh, the, the sale that we're having, like using <laughs> even the eclipse to try to, to sell a product, right? And seeing this, subhanAllah, uh, you know, I guess when someone, when it's, when there's an importance of something to someone, that's how and they, 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 they deal with it, but uh All right. So these first two oaths, again, definitely show us the power of Allah Azza wa Jal and His strength and His ability in the creation, in the universe. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا By the moon, when it's follows it it follows it any meaning when it follows the the sun okay and we know the moon uh, is a much much smaller but also amazing creation of allah azza wa jal uh, the beauty in it the movement of it the way that allah azza wa jal has made the sun and the moon indicators for time and for the the, the movement and the shift of of time as well uh, that uh, you know, we we know the day based off of you know the 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 sun, right? And the setting and the setting of the sun even based off of the month, right? Like any and the years, right? Like in the winter, the the amount of time the sun is out versus the summer, and it isn't isn't it amazing that like we know exactly when the sun rises and when the sun sets, like. 10 20 30 years in advance right just the, the perfection of the system and that the moon tells us when the beginning of the month is and when the middle of the month is and when the new month starts that the system that Allah Azza wa Jal put in place right and so here the 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 uh, the moon you know and of course <laughs> at the end of Ramadan the moon is also always a big topic and seeing the moon and and by the way, no one has seen the moon uh, yet. So, I mean, we, we have Eid, inshallah, Wednesday. That's the whole point. Like the, the, the possibility of seeing the moon is not really there uh, for today. So, inshallah, you know, but tomorrow, of course, there's going to be a lot of people looking for it. And uh, it's part of the whole experience. But here, Allah says, وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا When the moon, when it follows it, and the, the moon... Talaha here is very apt. It's a very accurate and precise word because the moon, uh, it's it, it is it follows not just the sun but it also follows the earth, right? Like meaning it's 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 a moon of the earth, right? There's many moons, but this is the moon that is of the earth, and so this is the moon that is most relevant to us because this is the moon that uh, that we're connected to, right? And that's connected to us. And also the, uh, and because the moon, you know, rotates around the earth, of course, right? Uh, and then the moon also, it uh, it follows the sun, both in the fact in the daytime you have the sun and then in the night that you have the moon, but also this you know, reality of uh, that the, the moon gets its light from uh, from. <clears throat> gets its life from the sun, right? Gets its light, not life, but gets its light from from the sun. Okay. Uh,
and this is something actually that is uh, yani referenced or mentioned in in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Uh, that it's the sun that is liya, that's just like the shining lamp, and then the, the moon is a light that is reflected from, from the sun. Okay. Okay, meaning yani the 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 uh, the moon, its its light is from is from the sun, and uh, yani its shine is is from the light of of the sun. Also, uh, like we said, the moon comes after the sun. The moon comes after the sun. Yani, uh, when when the the dunya becomes dark, and the and the sun. Uh, goes away the come the the moon comes the moon comes right uh, and then it becomes like like a sun for the night of course it's not the same in terms of its power or its ability yani, but it, it's something that uh, follows and is a great yani, it, like it does illuminate the night especially when it is like a full moon and it's also a sign of of beauty as well. The Arabs, especially, they used to use the moon as an indicator of of beauty. They used to use the moon as an indicator of beauty, right? Like they would describe the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they would see him, like his face was like the moon, right? And he was more beautiful. They would say than the moon when it is, uh, yani, uh, full, right? Layla to Badr, the the moon of of of, of Badr. Any meaning, the moon when it is uh, at, in, in its full, uh, all of its glory. Okay. Allah Azza wa says, "When Nahari ida jallaha," right? Then He swears by the uh, the day when it. When it the day when it follows it or the day as it unveils it as it un unveils it okay so jallaha yani means kashafaha wa adharaha like unveils or exposes something okay and so uh it's possible that the damir here that the ha jallaha refers to the sun right meaning that the the uh the sun is very yani, uh, uh, prominent and seen in the daytime okay but also jallaha could mean that when nahari ida jallaha yani when the daytime it uh, illuminates yani when it by the day when it illuminates it illuminates it here what illuminates the uh the the earth the earth okay when it unveils it so what that's that's the the it here is is uh the the earth okay That's that. That's what seems to be what's what's being mentioned here. Even though the Earth is not being mentioned specifically, right? So it's it's it jallaha when it illuminates it, it it's it's clear and it can be very, uh, yani it's because it's it's something that is common and out in the open and knowledge that, you know, that the 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 daytime illuminates the Earth. Right, so it, even though the lamir is not like uh, this is something that is it doesn't have to even be mentioned, the ha like what it is because it's very clear what the daytime illuminates. Okay, well, layli ida yagsha ha, right? That uh, when and then. By the night when it covers, when it covers, and here uh, again it would be 
the night when it covers it, either the sun or the the earth, right? So the daytime conceals, or sorry, uh, the daytime exposes, the nighttime conceals. The daytime exposes, the nighttime, the nighttime conceals. أي يعني so he says يغطي الأرض فتظلم okay so here Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the sun and the day and then he swears by the moon and the night and all of these things what's the common link between them the common link like there is a common link of of the concept of light right فالشمس نور the the sun is a light وضحاها نور and it's uh, uh, its light is a light, of course, and the, the, the moon is a light as well, and the daytime is light. Even the night, even if even though the night is uh, dark, right, except Allah Azza wa Jal still, still puts in this, this dark, dark nighttime light, which is like the light of the moon, right, and then you have the stars as, as well. And, and this shows, like, any you know, these things show... He said, "Fi dalik ishara ila ghalabat al-nur, like the the great amounts of light that's out there, right? Wa kathratuhu, wa isalatuhu, wa umqat, wa wa umquhu, right? That the that this is like almost like a default state that Allah Azza wa Jalla has created all of this this light, and uh, some use this concept of like the the extensiveness of of the light." To show, yeah, to, to give an indication in the ishara of the strength of the deen and its, you know, it, its its power and its zuhur, it's 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 the fact that it's it's uh, it's going to, yeah, uh, make its like it's gonna it's gonna come, yeah, it's gonna come out in a way that's going to overpower everything else, just like the light does, and is going to be prominent and present and and mighty and strong right because this you know wallahu uh, mutimmu nurihi right allah azza wa jal will perfect his light i.e his deen like you can't stop the sun from coming out you can't stop the light from spreading the light will eventually come out no matter who or or what tries to or what tries to stop it right so that's uh some mention that as an as an indicator of you know, this based off of these four oaths, uh, actually five oaths here that that all have this common link of of light, right? For these last two, when Nahari ida jallaha, you know, by the day when it illuminates it, when Layli ida yagshaha, and the night when it. Uh, covers it when it covers it yes okay any questions up until here alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Okay, I think maybe we will stop there, inshallah, uh, and then just uh, continue uh, tomorrow. If there's any questions or anything, um,
Okay, so just as another reminder for those who came after, just a couple things. Tomorrow we will have class, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe it'll be a little bit more of an extended class. We'll see. Uh, just to you know, make sure that we finish the surah and then even to make up from for some of the time since we're ending a little bit early today. Uh, and the reason that we're ending early, we do have the solar eclipse prayer at all three of our locations after Salat al-Dhuhr. So for those who are able to make it out to that, uh, try to do that. If you are unable to make it out for the Salah, then you can, uh, at the masjid, then you can pray it uh, individually within the time of the eclipse. And the actual Salah itself has a different uh, method that is, uh, you know, what we explained. So it's two rak'ahs with an extra two ruku'ahs in and 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 recitations in 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 each of those rak'ahs so a total of four ruku'ahs with uh, four sets of recitation and um it's it's also inshallah uh you know uh, and then sometimes you know there's like uh even like a small reminder and, and stuff uh, after uh, the salah so it's a good experience uh, to have and then there is also salat al-tarawih tonight so try you know, to, to make it out or to pray some qiyam tonight so that you can get the reward inshallah of having uh, fulfilled the uh, you know, the command of uh, and then the virtue of man qama uh, man qama ramadan Right, the idea of doing qiyam in Ramadan, meaning every night of Ramadan, if possible. So to make it to tonight, and then inshallah tomorrow we'll talk about some of the issues related to uh, Eid and and the Salah and the Sunan of Eid, inshallah. So uh, Ramadan is not over yet. I know with the khatma of the Quran, there is this feeling that okay, you know, we're, we're done, we accomplished, it's 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 it's, it's over. Not yet, not yet. Again, maybe tonight is the night for you to sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be forgiven. Maybe tonight is the night that Allah Azza wa writes you from those who are free from the hellfire, right? Maybe today, maybe in the last few moments of the month of Ramadan, you find what it, is, what it was that you were seeking. You find an answer to your dua. You find Allah Azza wa special mercy. You find guidance you find acceptance so you know till the very end inshallah i know the eid mode can get turned on don't worry you'll have time for eid inshallah you'll have time to to enjoy that but until then you know and if you have things obviously that you need to take care of and that you need to prepare no problem but don't switch into eid mode until you know you inshallah ta'ala have uh you know Cross the finish line strong. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Uh, maybe I'll see some of you at uh, Ogden uh, for the salah. And then tonight we have a special guest at Ogden who's leading actually Salat uh, Isha and Tarawih on behalf of an organization that will be there. And then also we have uh, different qira'at being recited at 75th from Sheikh Salim. So two uh, yani beautiful opportunities uh, for Salah tonight as well. Inshallah, we'll see you uh, yani, uh, sometime soon. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.